Whew. Man, I'm actually a little nervous for this one. What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. You have clicked on Gotham Cenobites. My name is Terry and I'm coming at you today something a little different um, but um, it's something I've, I've always been a fan of and something I've, I've always, if you ask my wife, I've had a humongous opinion about and it's something that's always involved in my life. I've been involved in my life. I mean, my son is named after the singer of this band we're talking about today. So, uh, this is gonna be a album review for, um, the metal band In Flames and their latest outing, Forgone. So, if you're new to the channel, um, you can see kind of what's behind me. You can see kind of what my regular content is mostly filled of. It's either statue reviews, or me kind of giving my opinion on stuff. Um, I'm actually going to get into movie reviews as well this year, more ample. But um, so yeah, that's basically that's me. Um, um, if you are new here and this video grabs you, um, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, um, maybe this will be something that you like. Um, I'm not going to do it too often. Um, just a band that I like that comes out with a new CD. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be a reoccurring segment too often, but it is something I want to get involved in. Um, music has always been with me. Um, I had a tough upbringing, but um, music has always been the constant in my life. Um, some of this metal stuff has even gotten me through some pretty bad points in my life. But um, that's neither here nor there. Um, today we are going to review In Flames Foregone. Let's get into it. So just a brief kind of small, I'm going to try to be small, bio of In Flames. Um, they were founded um, in 1990. Um, they're a Gothenburg Swedish uh, metal band. and it, They were actually founded by one of their previous members, um, Jesper. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. i got, I got enough name, names to mispronounce today. But um, it was initially a side project um, for an outlet um, to do kind of more melodic stuff that he wasn't really allowed to record in his primary band. I mean, he did end up leaving that band um, for those same you know, kind of creative differences and focused more on In Flames. Um, their original singer um, was from Dark Tranquility, and I believe he is the singer for the Halo Effect now. And uh, his name is Mikkel Michael Stan. So that was their original singer, um, but since 1994, um, but the release of their first album, Lunar Strain, Anders has been the singer since. Um, some people kind of throw around the, the notion that they kind of like sold out um, Clay Man On, which was released in the year 2000, which is also kind of where I first heard of them, was on Clay Man in the year 2000. But um, this is this is foregone, and it will be their fourteenth studio album. So nineteen ninety to twenty twenty three is kind of it's a pretty, pretty long long time. 
but the current members, um, two, I think of the original since 1994, um, is going to be Bjorn Gilot, hopefully I'm saying that right, on guitars, um, Anders Frieden is the singer, and you got Bryce Paul, Tanner Wayne, and Chris Broderick. So those are the current members, and, uh, so that is a brief kind of bio, I mean, I know I probably should have said a little more, maybe I should have said a little less, but um, that's the brief bio of In Flames. Now, to get into the, to the review, um, this album kind of uh, starts with, I mean, I, it's kind of a way I don't really care um, for anybody to start a CD, and it's kind of a, just, just a two minute long, um, just, just instrumental, I mean, I guess it, it's good for your initial um, offering, um, but when you are listening to this CD, I'm with me, I'm, I'm a service tech, so I'm listening to the whole album over and over again for a week, and it's the, it's the track you, you skip every time it comes back around, you skip it, because you want to get right back into the metal, so it's a good idea, I guess, but to me, um, CD with 12 songs, and you waste one of them with instrumental, but I mean, I get it. They do it a lot, but uh, so getting into the overall pace of the album, I mean, you got that slow track, and then the first three songs, "State of Slow Decay," "Meet Your Maker," and "Bleeding Out," they kind of you know set the tone. I mean, they're they're pretty some of the best tracks on here, and then down there, kind of towards the middle, uh, with "Foregone Part Two," and "Pure Light of Mind," some of the softer, more melodic stuff, which I mean that that's awesome as well. And Pure Light of Mind really surprised me. And like I did highlight, or I will coming up, depending on how I edit this video together, um, Andrews with his vocal coach, I mean, I really, when I first heard the first time Pure Light of Mind, I, I honestly didn't think it was Andrews. I thought maybe somebody else was on this album. But then as it went on, I was like, fuck, that's really, that's Andrews. So, I mean, it just, it was surprising, but not in a bad way, in my opinion. But then The Great Deceiver and In the Dark pick it back up. I mean, In the Dark is definitely one of the heavier songs. And it, <laughs> it was, I mean, of all of these, In the Dark is probably the first one, the first time going through this album that I had to bump it back and listen to that shit again. I mean, it, it's really, I mean, In Flames, they're not really known for long songs, but it is longer and it is some heavy shit. And it, it's just, it's really, really good. And then to wrap it up, I mean, so no sure, um, a dialogue in B-flat minor and in the transmission. I mean, a dialogue in B-flat minor and um, in the transmission, I mean, those are some of the, the best songs on here as well. Um, if I had to rate my favorite songs, it would probably be Foregone, Part 2, In the Dark, and a dialogue in B-flat minor. It's just, um, yeah, the CD, it ends heavy. And it's great, and uh, yeah, <laughs> this album is, is so good. And the music is great too. I mean, the music you could definitely, I mean, the guitars and the bass, I um, mean, everybody you can tell has been dedicated um, to playing better, better stuff, better sound. I mean, this this CD really is pretty, it's pretty, pretty damn good. So I've been watching a lot of reviews. Um, it's kind of it's kind of something that I felt. I wouldn't say that when I first heard it one the first time that I thought it sounds like Olden Flames because I don't think it sounds like Olden Flames. And when I go back and listen to Lunar Strain, I know I'm in the minority, but I do not like Lunar Strain. And this this is. And just to kind of give you another idea, this is from the 2000 um, Clayman CD, and this is what I came into.
see very very different and just to kind of give you um, the tone this is um, the first song where after the instrumental this is some of that first song that kind of gets this album going So yeah, um, is it a return to old? Um, maybe a return to 2000, but not a return to old. Um, and thank God, um, it really is though kind of one of their, I mean, there is some soft stuff in here, but it really is kind of the heaviest, I guess I would say, in some, in some places the heaviest album probably since Clayman, to be honest with you. So I don't think it's an absolute return to old, but I, I do kind of feel like it's a perfect blend, a perfect balance that you have from some of the older stuff and then some of their recent offerings like like Siren Charms, uh, Battles. I mean, it's it's just it's a perfect mix of the new and the old. I did hear um, in this CD and the last CD, I, The Mask, that Anders um, actually kind of started going to see a vocal coach. You can kind of you can kind of tell um, in Eye of the Mask, but in this album, you can for sure it it stands out. I mean, there is a few um, songs where his voice is soft, and you can absolutely tell he's had some kind of vocal coach. But even in the harder tracks, I mean, this is probably one of the uh, dare I say the easiest to understand Anders, even when he is screaming. So it's definitely um, the easiest to hear, easiest to understand song, um, album offering by Andrews. And I absolutely love it. I mean, this is a band I've been obsessed with um, over 20 years. I got my wife into I named my son. He's four years old after Andrews. Um, so I'm just really interested in this band. And I like the softer stuff. And it does, it does, it sounds a lot better. But just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm saying, I'm going to play you a few songs where you can kind of hear some of the softer stuff right here. So yeah, I mean that's some softer stuff. I mean I know it's a metal band, but I mean we, we we give not me, but some of the fans give this band so much hell about selling out and about how you, you don't sound death metally enough. You have that soft ass shit, but it's like one of my favorite bands, um, just as much as In Flames, maybe even a, a tight more, is Kill Switch Engage. And every single album, they are, they are some of the heaviest shit, but then they are some of the softest shit. And just to kind of get off topic, with them, if you haven't checked out, um... Oh, fuck, what's the name of that band? Times of Grace. Go check out Times of Grace. They're a great band. But, um, yeah, I, I love 
the softer stuff. I mean, I actually really gave In Flames hell when Siren Charms was released. And, I mean, I hated it the first time I listened to it. Um, didn't even buy Battles right away, which was their next album, because I was so upset. But, um, but yes, Siren Charms is a great album. And I kind of apologize to In Flames my own way. And I will never doubt them again. But, um... Getting back into this, um, as far as music goes, I mean, the guitars are, are killer. I mean, they're really, I mean, there's a few solos in here that are they're really, really well done. Um, but so the music is always as good. I mean, it's heavy when it needs to be, and, you know, it sounds it sounds great. Um, there really is a lot more bass in this album. Um, that I, I mean, I noticed just, you can actually hear the bass a lot more. Um, it's, which is fucking great. Um, my bass is awesome. But, um, knowing me, I mean, I'm very... I, I love music, but, I mean, the lyrics a lot of times stick out with me. And there was a point where I think it was the, the first, maybe the second time, um, I heard in the transmission, which is the final track on this album. And when it... I'm driving to a call, and I, I heard it, and when he says, Choose your side... There are no winners. Hell is overcrowded and heaven's full of sinners. I mean, I had to rewind, I rewind it on my seat, on, on, a, on the zip drive just to make sure I heard what I heard. And lo and behold, he says it about five more times in the song. But I don't know why that just really sticks out with me. I mean, depending on where you are in the world in your head, I mean, it's, it's so true. Um, another lyric that stood out to me was in Foregone Part 2. Which is one of my favorite songs. And if, if you look in the mirror and don't like what's there, it's the one you despise with no tears to spare. So yeah, I mean those are two of the lyrics that really stood out to me. And uh, as far as favorite tracks go, uh, my favorite tracks were, were Foregone Part Two, um, In the Dark. A dialogue in B flat minor, which in the dark and a dialogue in B flat minor. They're towards the end of the CD, and there's some. In the dark is the heaviest song for sure on this album. Give this a listen. That is one of the best songs on the CD, and I mean, my overall thoughts, I mean, this album is fantastic. Um, in my opinion, I do believe that some of you older In Flames fans can go out and get this and find some enjoyment in it. Um, some of the newer people, um, it's it's going to blow you away as well. Me being a fan in 2020, since 2000, I mean... Um, I would probably rank this in the top five albums by In Flames, maybe even the top three. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did get my wife into this band, like I said, and we ended up naming our kid after Andrews, but um, the one album that I, we really love is Come Clarity. Um, that's me and the wife's song. I have the album cover like above my computer here, and I eventually want to get that tattooed on me as well. But, um, so yeah, it ranks right up there with me, uh, with Come Clarity. Like, this, this CD is, is, is really, really that good. So, if I had to give... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> people who are used to watching music reviews. Uh, this is my first one. Um, I hope I did well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if, if you do see some of the stuff behind me, this is what's coming. More music reviews, eventually. But um, if I had to give this any type of rating, I would definitely give it a 4.5 out of 5, or a 9 out of 10, for Foregone by In Flames, released February 10th, 2023. I definitely uh, recommend you going out and getting it. Um, I mean, shit, it's 2023, so if you don't want to waste money, 
Uh, but you can deal with ads. Uh, I have YouTube Premium, so I haven't seen the ad in over a year. But um, go to Inflames, give them a subscribe on YouTube, um, give them some views on their videos. I mean, they have the entire album up there for you to go listen before you buy it. But um, support your bands, um, buy it, copy of it, buy it digitally. I usually try my best to do both digital and hand copy because I'm that old. I, I need to have it in the flesh. But yeah, I mean, just in general, I mean, not just this great band or this album. Go out and support your musicians. Um, if they come to your town and you love them, go see them. In Flames, Foregone. And 14th studio album. You guys, you gotta go give In Flames a chance. They're, they're one of the best if you like metal. That is going to do it for me. Um... If you want to, subscribe, like the video, um, you'll catch me, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, same name, I'm put it up here, Gotham Cenobites, and yeah, thank you guys for making it this far, I appreciate everybody watching my stuff, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.